for more on this development, I am now being joined from the United Kingdom by a lecturer of international law, uh, international relations and security in Liverpool Hope University, Dr. Bola Adedirong. Good to have you join us. Good me. Um, let me start with a, a, a comment um, from um, the former Brexit secretary, uh, David Davis, where he said that this is the most unpredictable leadership race, um, but also one of the most important. And I just want to ask why that is, and if that is as true for the country as it is for the Conservative Party. Well, uh, um, I think that what David uh, Davis was trying to David Davis was trying to say here was that uh, for the first time we would be replacing uh, one of the most popular prime ministers in in recent memory. Don't forget that uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson uh, managed to lead the Conservative Party to an eighty majority seat. A victory over 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 the Labour Party. So, with the with the pop, uh, with the general population, Prime Minister Boris Johnson is very popular. Now, as you have also mentioned, he's also a very flawed Prime Minister, and part of his flaws were responsible for his early exit. Um, but I think that this particular leadership contest is also uh, uh, very important, partly because of the fact that we're seeing uh, an increasing number of ethnic minorities participate in the leadership contest. One of the very prominent and, uh, candidates is Rishi Sunak, uh, the former chancellor of uh, SG, uh, Cheka. Um, and we also have, have a Nigerian, uh, well, a British Nigerian, Kevin Badenoch, who is also uh, at the forefront of uh, the leadership contest. So we're seeing an increasing number of ethnic minorities put their uh, uh, their feet in the ring, and this is uh, this is this is a great thing. Hmm. And it's interesting you mentioned Rishi Sunak because this has been described largely as um, a Rishi Sunak versus the rest race. Um, but for you, how is the race shaping up? Yes, it is Rishi Sunak's race to lose. If one was to look at it from a, uh, from sort of an uncritical perspective. He has the name recognition. Um, certainly the fact that he served as the Chancellor of Exchequer for quite a while under Boris Johnson uh, has given him the visibility. And do not also forget that during the COVID pandemic, a lot of uh, a lot of British people got to know him uh, as a result of the largesse that he was of, oftentimes funneling out. Uh, we we had a lot of rebates and a lot of discounts, even on on restaurant eating. So going out to restaurants, the government was giving us money to 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 basically encourage people to go back to um, to um, to patronize restaurants. So people are very familiar with Rishi Sunak, but I also think that it would be. Uh, completely myopic to forget that there are other strong candidates. Uh, for instance, Penny Mordaunt, uh, who is uh, the international uh, trade minister, uh, is becoming a very formidable candidate. And I sense, in my, from my own perspective, uh, that Penny Mordaunt may give Rishi Sunak a very good run for his money. In fact, a current uh, recent survey showed that among Tory grassroots, uh, uh, who are likely are more than two hundred thousand of them who are likely to uh, um, to vote for the next conservative uh, leader in, in in before September? Uh, majority of them w want to see Penny Madant as the next conservative prime minister, um, and Rishi Sun Sunak came third on that survey. In fact, Kemi Badenoch came second on that survey. So uh, you know it. It is Rishi Sunak's to lose based on the fact that among MPs, uh, he, he is a formidable candidate among his peers. He's well, widely recognized. Uh, he has the pedigree, he has the, the, uh, the, the background, and he has the experience um, to con convince his uh, fellow conservative members. But among the Tories, uh, grassroots, it seems like Penny Madant is making a strong case. Oh. Let us also not forget that Liz Truss, uh, the foreign secretary has been auditioning for this role for a long time. In fact, people saw this as a race between Rishi Sunak and uh, Liz Truss for a long time. Uh, but her uh, profile has been damaged by some of the uh, statements she made concerning Ukraine, especially what Sergei Lavrov said about it, about her um, and dismissing her, her capabilities as foreign, foreign minister. So I think that 
there are some very interesting candidates, but uh, among MPs and among the elite of the party, Rishi Sunak, Rishi, Rishi Sunak is a strong candidate. Oh. And, uh, and for the uh, former cabinet ministers, I think you've mentioned about three of them, and there is also um, the former health minister, um, Sajid Javid. But for, for, for the former cabinet ministers, do you think that there is an ethical question here, especially when um, you find most of them now condemning um, some policies made by Boris Johnson, as, as, and they were in support of those policies while they were in office? Well, it's going to be a difficult one for them, uh, trying to walk that tightrope in terms of dis uh, distancing themselves from Boris Johnson, especially when they served with him for such a long period, and at the same time, uh, trying to give, uh, you know, set the stage for their own candidacy and, and declare their own intentions. I think uh, Rishi Sunak was trying to do that earlier today, saying that uh, Boris Johnson was a fantastic person, was an incredible prime minister who did a lot of good things, but also acknowledging at the same time that Boris Johnson was a very flawed prime minister and a flawed man although it did mention that everyone is flawed. So you see that fine line where politicians are trying to walk uh, the, the tightrope between distancing themselves from Boris Johnson, but also acknowledging the, their relationship with Boris Johnson and, and, uh, and their culpability in propping up the, his regime or his administration for a long term. But don't also forget that Boris Johnson is still also very popular within the Conservative Party, especially among Tory grassroots. The coup, well, quote and unquote, uh, that removed Boris Johnson was mostly from MPs. Among the Tory grassroots, among uh, 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 people across the country, oh. there's still a groundswell, there's still a groundswell of support for Boris Johnson. So they also have to keep that in mind. But I think All that... Right. I was waiting for you to land, but, but that's fine. Um, we're expecting the, um, the numbers to be weighted down in the coming days. We'll see how that plays out. Um, in September. Thank you so much for talking to us, Dr. Bola Didiro. Thank you very much.